This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. The Standard & Poor's decision today reverberating throughout Washington, D.C., where lawmakers will continue to toil over a budget plan when they get back from their recess. Now, to find out how all this could affect the economy, let's bring in my next guest, Christina Romer, former chair of President Obama's Council of Economic Advisors, currently a professor of economics at the University of California at Berkeley, and a Bloomberg contributing editor. Christina Romer, thank you so much for joining us. What are the implications from your perspective of S&P's announcement today? You know, I think the big picture, of course, is that the S&P announcement at some level isn't surprising. I mean, we have known for a very long time that the long-run budget outlook here in the United States is, is very bad. Um, in some ways, it's puzzling that S&P is just now noticing that, it, it, and it's particularly puzzling given finally people are talking about it. Uh, so, so it certainly is a little bit strange. But I think what we're seeing in the market reaction is a very big warning shot that uh, the world is concerned about our budget deficit and policymakers need to understand that they have to get this thing under control. It's time for the comprehensive plan. I think we're also seeing just a tiny foretaste of, of just how disastrous it would be if, for example, we didn't raise the debt ceiling or there was a concern that we might not do it in a timely fashion. I think what we're learning is nobody has the stuff for that kind of brinksmanship uh, in the current uh, situation. Professor Romer, there are many plans to deal with the deficit. The president has a plan. There's a Republican plan. There were two commissions that have come together and put together some proposals. What do you think the outlines of an agreement are going to look like? You know, I suspect that the outlines of an agreement are going to look very much like what the Bipartisan Fiscal Commission came up with last December. I think, um, you know, that's what the group of six senators in uh, the Senate that seem to be coming toward a, a bipartisan plan, I think theirs is going to look a lot like that. I think the president's plan looks a lot like that. Right now, the the main outlier is obviously the House Republican uh, plan put, put forth by Representative Ryan. That's a very different animal, and I really don't think that that's going to be viable as a bipartisan solution. Now, we were speaking earlier with Douglas Holtz Aiken in Washington, and he was saying that it's important to understand whether the deficit is tackled from a spending perspective or from a revenue perspective. Do you think that Republicans and Democrats are going to be able to at least respect each other's positions and meet halfway? Yeah, I think they're going to have to. I mean, if you look at what the president talked about in his speech last Wednesday, he was talking about, you know, reducing the overall deficit by $4 trillion over the next 12 years. About three quarters of that would come from spending cuts and about one quarter of that comes from revenue increases. And I think that is a very balanced plan, and that's one that Republicans ought to be able to get behind. You know, right now, again, in the House plan, there's nothing coming from the revenue side. And I think that would be, you know, unrealistic. I think just trying to do all of this on the spending side, you see the kind of things you have to cut. You have to gut Medicare. You have to gut Medicaid. You have to bring discretionary spending down to just ridiculously low levels. I don't think that's what the American people want. So I think there is going to have to be compromise. I think the Democrats have already compromised quite a lot. And I think it's going to mean that uh, certainly House Republicans are going to have to, to be compromising uh, somewhat more. Professor Romer, uh, the Federal Reserve and quantitative easing part two that ends in June, is there something that comes after that? Or do you think the economy can run on its own steam? You know, I, I think that the Fed is unlikely to be taking additional measures. Uh, I don't see a, a quantitative easing three on the horizon. I think that's a mistake. I mean, we are, you know, the Fed talks a lot about we're in a self-sustaining recovery, and that's true. I don't see any chance that we're likely to, to double dip, but it's a pretty anemic recovery. And uh, I think there's a big difference between self-sustaining and a strong enough recovery to actually bring the unemployment rate down significantly. And, you know, I wish the Fed were thinking more about how do we make this a strong recovery, uh, especially given if we are right. moving to fiscal contraction, we need the Fed even more to be helping us along. I want to thank you very much, Professor Christina Romer from University of California, Berkeley. Coming